Just to work through an example of Kirchhoff's rules for solving circuit problems. So as you probably remember, there's two rules. There's Kirchhoff's current law and there's Kirchhoff's voltage law. Uh, Kirchhoff's current law states that the current flowing into out of a node uh, are equal. And Kirchhoff's voltage rule says that the voltage drops and increases around a loop add up to zero. And so these two rules can be used for solving certain circuit problems. In this particular problem, we're given a circuit, it's pictured here. It contains uh, three resistors and two batteries. We know the resistances of the resistors. So at the top, seven ohms, in the middle, five ohms, and in the bottom, two ohms. We know the EMF for one battery. We don't know the EMF called epsilon of the other battery. Regarding the currents that are flowing in the three arms of the circuit, so there's the top arm, the middle arm, and the bottom arm, I call the current in the uh, top arm I1, the current in the bottom arm is I2, and the current in the middle arm is I3. We know the following information. So we know that I3 is from the left to the right, and it's two amps. We're told that in this problem. Regarding I1 and I, I2, we don't know the values of these currents, but we do know that they are current flows into this node at this point. And so, that's a sketch of the circuit, sketch of the information we know. And we're asked to figure out the un remaining unknowns. The remaining unknowns are the sizes of current I1 in the top arm, current I2 in the bottom arm, and the EMF that's in the bottom arm of the circuit. So we're going to figure those three things. We're going to figure them using Kirchhoff's laws. I'm going to start by figuring the current I, I1. And the reason I started with figuring the current I1 is because I, I thought about the top section of the circuit and the bottom section of the circuit. In the top section of the circuit, I, I know everything except I1. In the bottom section of the circuit, I don't know I2 and I don't know the EMF. So for that reason, there's one unknown in the top part of the circuit, uh, top section of the circuit, two unknowns in the bottom section of the circuit. I focused on that unknown I1. I'm gonna figure out I1 by applying uh, the voltage draw. Kirchhoff's voltage rule. I'm going to write the fact that I'm using the voltage rule by this notation. The sum of the voltages around the loop, that's the left hand side here, equals zero. And I'm going to apply that rule to a particular loop. It's this loop upstairs here that contains the unknown current. But if we think about this loop, Everything else in this loop is known to me. The resistors, the EMFs, the other current I3, they're all known to me. And so if I think about the voltage rule for this loop, I'm going to be constructing an equation that contains only one unknown. I'm going to start at the top left-hand corner of this loop. And I'm going to work my way clockwise around the loop, across the top arm of the circuit and then back through the middle arm of the circuit to where I started. And as I do that, I'm going through the seven ohm resistor, the 15 volt battery and the five ohm resistor. And each of those has an associated either increase or decrease in potential, changing potential. And I'm just going to um, add those, add those potentials up. So 
with the seven ohm resistor, the potential drop across the seven ohm resistor is going to be by Ohm's law, seven ohms times the uh, current I1. And because we're walking opposite the direction of the current flow, the current is from right to left, according to this arrow. I'm walking from left to right, because I'm walking clockwise. This will be walking up the potential hill in that resistor, up the waterfall in that resistor. Then I come to the battery. I'm going to walk from the positive terminal of the battery to the negative terminal of the battery. So I'm walking down and stepping down in potential as I cross the battery. So if the battery is 15 volts, I step down 15 volts. Finally, I walk through the 5 ohm resistor in the middle arm of the circuit. Again, I'm walking, I'm walking clockwise. I'm walking opposite the direction of the current. It's indicated here. So in this case, we're going to have a change in potential by Ohm's law that is 5 ohms times I3. 5 I3. And it's an increase in potential because I'm walking opposite the current flow. So it's plus five by three. And these three changes from the two resistors in the battery must add up to zero. And this is an equation, if you look at it, an equation that we can rearrange to figure out the, to figure out the, um, the unknown current I3. So rearranging for I1, that's the unknown. I can take the 15 and the 5I3 over to the right-hand side of the equation. So the 15 minus 15 will become plus 15. And the plus 5I3 will become minus I3. Now, I3 is 2 amps. We know that. So this is minus 10. And I just need to divide by 7 to get the current I1. And so you can see that this is 5 over 7 amps. That's, um, I worked it out, 0.714 amps. And that's the solution for the unknown current I1. So now I'm thinking, what's the next easiest thing that I can solve? I don't know the current I2 in the bottom arm of the circuit. And I don't know the EMF of the battery in the bottom half of the circuit. But now I'm starting to think about the junction rule the current rule at this particular node here on the uh, center, center ladder. I know the current coming out of it is I3, 2 amps. I know one of the currents going into it, I1, is 0.714 amps. The only thing I don't know is the current I2 that's also going into that node. So here's a case where I can use the um, current rule I'm going to write it as the, the current into a node must be equal to the current out of a node. In this particular case, I1 goes into the node. I2 goes into the node. I1 is flowing down from the top section of the circuit. I2 is flowing up from the bottom section. And I3 in the middle section is the current, the only current that's flowing out. If I look at this equation now, I've just got one unknown, it's the current I2. I can rearrange it for I2. I2 will be equal to I3, which is two amps, less I1, when I take it from the left-hand side to the right-hand side, which is I1 is the answer from the previous part of the question. That's 0.714 amps 
And so if I subtract 0.71 amps from two amps, I'm going to get 0.129 amps. Okay, so we've solved for these two currents now, I1 and I2. The only remaining thing we have to solve for is the battery EMF. And so we want now an equation involving the battery EMF. There's two equations that we could write down here that involve the battery EMF. We could uh, walk around this lower loop using Kirchhoff's voltage rule to create an equation that involves this EMF. We could actually walk around the um, outer loop to also get a, another equation that involves the battery EMF. This lower loop will give us a simpler equation because there's only three components in this loop. The outer loop will give a little more complicated equation with four components in the outer loop. So I'm going to go with this, this smaller loop here. Again, I'm using the voltage rule here. The sum of the voltages around the loop is zero. I'll denote it like that. And then we'll just walk around this, this particular loop. I'll, um, I'll start again at this a node on the left. And so we'll walk through the five ohm resistor, walking towards the right in the clockwise direction, then walk um, towards the left through the battery EMF and through the uh, two ohm resistor back to where we started. So walking through the five ohm resistor, I'm walking now in the direction of the current row. The voltage change will be the resistance to the resistor times I3. And this is a voltage decrease because I am walking opposite the direction. I'm walking with the direction of the current. And I'm going to walk around the circuit. The next component I'll meet on the bottom arm of the circuit is the battery EMF. Now I'm walking from the negative terminal of the battery to the positive terminal of the battery. And so uh, this is going to be an increase in electrical potential equal to the, the battery's terminal voltage or EMF. And then finally, I'm walking through the two ohm resistor. When I walk through the two ohm resistor, I'm walking in the direction of the current flow. The potential difference across the two ohm resistor by Ohm's law is, is the resistance times the current. So it's going to be two, two ohms times I2. And this, because I'm walking in the direction of the current flow, I'm jumping down the waterfall. Uh, this is uh, a negative changing potential. These three changes add up to zero. That's Kirchhoff's rule. And I can rearrange this equation now for the EMF. I've just got to take the two terms involving the two currents from the left-hand side over to the right-hand side. I'm going to get for the 5I3 term, this is 5 times the 2 amp current. And for the 2I2 term, I'm going to get 2 ohms times the current of I2, which is 1.29 amps. And uh, if I add these two contributions, so this is going to be 10 volts. And the second one here is going to be about uh, 2.6 volts. I'm going to get 12.6 volts. And that's the uh, potential the terminal voltage of this battery. So we solve this circuit using Kirchhoff's laws, the current law for junctions and the uh, uh, voltage rule for loops. We had to strategize in solving this problem. We didn't need to solve um, three equations, three unknowns. We could avoid solving three equations, three unknowns and all that mathematics. What we are able to do is to pick our path, to map our path through the circuit with the Kirchhoff rules in a way that each step we develop one equation with one unknown. And we were able to solve that for that one unknown. And then we went on to the next step. With that extra information, we were able to write the next equation as 
a single equation with one unknown and solve that. And then finally do the same thing again with the information from that solution, right? A third equation with just one unknown to so solve for the third, third unknown. So it was important in this problem that we worked our way from, from the quantity I1 and found that out to the quantity I2, found that out. And finally to the quantity epsilon of the battery and, and found that. That root allowed us one equation, one unknown, one equation, one unknown, and finally one more equation, one more unknown. You'll notice one thing that I also did in solving this problem that I would never do in general in problems, and that's putting numbers early on. The Kirchhoff's rule suggests seems easier. It seems easier to work with the algebra if you plug in known resistances as numbers, plug in known battery EMFs as numbers early on, and just leave behind unknowns so that you can see clearly the unknowns. 